As a former high school teacher, I often wondered the inner workings of my students' mind and what action, if any, I could take to improve their life chances. Since studying the Panel 7 Up documentary, I've come to realize how limited my understanding was of their lives. Despite knowing some of them for four to five years, it amazes me how two hours of interviews can unveil the depth of people's life, struggles, ambitions, and worries, and so on and so on. The documentary plans to check in with everyone involved every seven years, capturing and witnessing how their lives unfold. This highlight of the Panel 7 Up features not only some of my former students, but also three young Romanians I encountered during my extensive journey around Europe. What do you like about yourself? Um, that's Josh. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I just nothing I really like, and there's nothing I dislike. Uh, hello. My name is Stefan. Mm. I'm 17 years old. Mm. Um, I'm a high school student mm. at one of the best uh, high schools in the country. Mm. It's to top 20, I think, and the best high school in my city. Mm. Um, I was a basketball player for four years mm. and a tennis player for two years. Mm. A dancer for three years. I uh, Dancer? Yes, I was okay. a dancer. Okay. Uh, street dancer, hip hop. Oh, right. Yeah. So, um, we've uh, let's say I've been introduced to the hood life and to the American life <laughs> early okay. in my life mm -hmm. because yeah, the neighborhood where I grew up and uh, the sports that we played mm -hmm. were the ones like something specific for the American culture, let's mm -hmm. say. But we live in a Romanian style. Like mm -hmm. we have this Balkan mentality mm -hmm. with some, uh, I don't know, American ways of okay. living life, you know, and right. spending time. What's that like? Can you describe a little bit if you can? For example, uh, after school mm -hmm. at 4 or 5 p.m., mm -hmm. everybody, every child from the hood mm -hmm. at my age, mm -hmm. we go together like behind the block behind mm. the apartments mm. and we play their football basketball american football mm. uh, a lot of childish games mm. and between us there were a lot of older people you know okay. their parents and some teenagers because we were like i don't know nine or ten years old mm. staying behind the block with 14 or 15 years old mm. older mm. that smoked mm. even weed <laughs> and uh, this was something normal for us to see older people that do illegal stuff mm -hmm. for their age okay. and we started to do things like that you know like stealing beating other people from other neighborhoods mm -hmm. since we were little you know okay so that kind of lifestyle is it still going on no because technology even if it's a good thing right now because uh, they prevent the hood life let's say okay um you know the worst thing that is the the fact that young people are very uh i don't know very easy to influence very mm. easy to mm. become depressed because of the technology you mm. know so uh, there are good things about having a lot of technology around us mm. but they still make kids to stay in in their places okay. without going outside without discovering the world mm. and truly how it is mm. because even if we had those um, gang shit mm. around and mm. uh, i don't know those big groups of children that uh, mm. hung around and uh, did a lot of illegal stuff mm. we still discovered early in life how how to live life 
mm-hmm. truly, and how to avoid bad things. Because okay. right now, seven years after starting officially being a child that does illegal things, mm-hmm. uh, now I can I realize that this is not something good for me and good mm-hmm. for my people mm-hmm. and for my family. Mm-hmm. So that's why I quit everything that uh, harmed me and harmed people. Okay. I think you have you ever been broken up? No, but I think I need to be on my own. I haven't really been single since I was 14. Oh wow. Really? Yeah. So what's this something? <clears throat> I don't know. Personally, I believe like this. Con- uh, enlightenment is when a wave realizes that it's the ocean. And as a human being, we are just part of the universe as a total and if i was a god and i was a god just by myself and i was lonely yeah i would create friends for myself wouldn't i like i would create friends if i could do anything i wanted if i was the universe and i wanted to learn more i'd create yeah. friends and um <clears throat> i kind of believe that like all energy in the universe is the mm. all matter in the universe mm. left to right uh, right sorry all matter in the universe is kind of this energy condensed down to a slow vibration mm. and that everyone here all humans are just one conscious universe experiencing itself subjectively mm. so we're all part of the same thing we're all part of one conscious just experiencing what it's like to live a uh, a human life subjectively turn so it's this thing and that yeah, up here, yeah. death mm. death is not real okay because life in its sense in itself is a dream and we're just the imaginations of ourselves <laughs> really yeah oh wow um just one second okay go on so a finger is part of like your human as this finger is part of trent but it's also a finger by itself So what if Trent is Trent but also he's part of a bigger thing in its sense. Mm-hmm. And in a way, the just way that tree is the tree but it's also part of earth. This earth is part of the solar system which is part of the universe. I am just a small part of the universe. A small part but part of the universe ever no matter like how you say it, I'm part of the universe. Which in a sense means that <clears throat> like I'm a, I'm the universe. The same way as this this finger is Trent mm. a part of Trent at least it is still just as much Trent as the rest of me. Mm. So me as Trent is is part of the universe and is the universe and is just as much of the universe as any other part as that car that bin the flowers the trees the nights the stars everything and, and the entire universe. The entire universe. Now we are conscious as I I'm, I know what I'm doing. I'm a conscious human being and as a con- as a human being, we don't even know where consciousness comes from. Mm. We don't know we studied the brain, but we don't know where consciousness comes from. And um I remember reading this quote uh I think um, Michael Jackson or something said it where he woke up in the middle of the night with the idea for idea for a song mm. and then um <coughs> he called his manager said we need to go down to the Mm. studio right away and record the song because if we don't do it now then prince will make the song instead oh because he knew he believed that ideas and thoughts they're not your thoughts they kind of just float around and you're like an antenna and they come to you mm. and if you don't use the idea then someone else will get it oh. so if that's true then i think of consciousness as something that we don't really have in us it's kind of like something that's all around us that something you can't really see like an energy mm. that consciousness that all around us and that consciousness is the universe and we're just part of it and we're just experiencing life subjectively mm. i'm experiencing the life as trent even though i'm the universe mm. i'm experiencing life as trent so all of us are just the same we're the same person at the end of the day we're just atoms we're all just the universe experiencing life subjectively death isn't real because life is just a dream and we're just imaginations of ourselves okay in order to let the audience understand you a little bit better okay let me just put it to the very narrow down this way so what what do you think then is meaning of life if the like you say you know you are you but at the same time you are also universe and then life is just a dream there's no death so what's the meaning of life here right what is 
purpose of everything that's happening? Well, I don't know. I feel like I've asked that question a lot, especially ever since I kind of grasped the question, the meaning of life. Mm. Sometimes I believe that the meaning of life in itself is the wrong question to ask mm. and that finding the right question is more of the idea. Mm. But um, That's actually a really good way to put it, but yeah. I will come it down to three things, I guess. Mm. Three answers. Mm. One, mm. Um, it's just to, to, I guess, to be, to experience, to be in... In Taoism, they call it to be in the Tao, mm -hmm. you know, be in the flow, to love one another, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Second one is there is no meaning to life, mm -hmm. and that um, it is what you give it. Mm -hmm. And the third one would be to learn, mm -hmm. because if we are just one, one consciousness and one mm -hmm. universe, and after we die, our consciousness goes back to mm -hmm the whole universe and then that all the information that we've learned on this universe goes back to the large universe mm. so all the information that we learn in this lifetime goes back to the mm. to the one universe then in a way we're just kind of learning more to give back to the mother consciousness I guess I don't know I don't okay. really know I'm only 18 I've still got the rest of my life to mm. find out what the meaning of life is but I'm, I'm very impressed that you actually thought about so many things like this like how it's going to turn out in if I do it again in four, eight years or something, and how, how are you going to answer these questions? Over on the side of the road, huh? <laughs> on the side of the road somewhere, smoking crack. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Hopefully not. God willing, God willing. No, uh, no. That's... You are like a very literary person. Well, I mean, understanding language is a very important thing because if you understand language to a high degree, mm. you can better convey your emotions, thoughts and feelings to other people. Mm. And if you want to strive and do well, you're going to need leadership skills. You're going to need any sort of communicatory skills. Mm. So you need to be able to communicate with people, whether that be through writing, through speech, mm. through visible actions, mm. you know, like when you talk, moving your hands, things like that, just to convey meaning. Mm. Um, very, very important thing in my mind. So mm. I like to think that I have a good vocabulary and um, that I am able to speak. But then have you been intentionally focusing and working on your speaking skills? Um, when I was younger in high school, I did, um, just so I could talk about physics concepts with a um, high degree of aptitude mm. um, you know I was able to actually communicate the proper terminology and a lot of that terminology was able to be you know mm. conveyed to other aspects of my my communication mm. Mm. Um, this, this, they this, don't this. they don't see life worth living yes that's I think where I differ I, I like to sometimes when I do feel in a point of where like oh why is this happening to me you know why do I feel so crap I, I just you know you have to Widen your, widen your horizons and realize there are people living in third world countries who don't even have drinkable water and you need to realize that it's not worth I don't know because you can't really say that you just sh shouldn't be depressed you know some people can't control that mm. but I feel for me I can just control it mm. and push forward and keep moving and keep if I'm always busy you know I can't get like my demons can't catch me if I'm always moving forward why do you think it's such a common issue of your generation that so many people are depressed I like to think that the industrial revolution has caused a lot of problems as well as a lot of good things. Mm. I like to think when it was a matter of life or death, you know, getting food and water for the day, you didn't have time to be depressed, you know, when like the top lifespan was 33, you know, mm. there was no time to have these thoughts, you know, this self um, destructive mm. lifestyle. Mm. Whereas today, um, the world is so geared towards mm. that negative. Um, mindset that it's people just fall into a hole they can't get out of um, you know like sometimes where I've been the happiest I've been you know in the middle of the bush nowhere no phone reception no nothing just me and nature mm. I'm able to observe insects you know killing each other and just food chain mm. things like that and I realize that you know life's not worth being sad about you need to realize that there are consequences to technology okay like what's your understanding of the death uh, death. Mm. I think death is something that brings a good thing for your soul mm. because life in general for a lot of people in this world mm. let's say five out of eight billion mm. people in this planet mm. live a life like me or a worse life than me mm. so um, 
Yeah, living life on Earth mm. is a tragedy itself. We just have to make it better. Mm. When you make the life better, like your life and other people's lives, when you do good things mm. around you mm. to other people, mm. you have a guaranteed place in heaven. Okay. I wish that I had less. Mm. Like I, I think I... I wish I didn't want for things, if that makes sense. Things that are unnecessary. So what do you what, what, what do you really want? Right now I want clothes. <laughs> I'm trying to change my wardrobe. Um, but I shop second hand now, mostly. As much as I can. Um, yeah, I wish that I didn't care so much about that stuff. About what I'm wearing and what other people think about what I'm wearing and it really doesn't matter but it matters to me see I reckon guys are just the same really? yeah I totally think so I think they just like because like I don't know in society I feel like males they always have to be like seen as like strong and masculine and like oh like I'm so confident in myself like whatever but I reckon like deep down they definitely are insecure like about different things and I think they just don't show it really? yeah I think it needs to be more normalized for like men to show emotion because it's like so normal and like constantly having to hide how you're truly feeling you know it is more like a like a girl issue but I still think that like guys get insecure so who's who's secure who's who's feeling secure about themselves who's so the truly confident people? literally no, no one, one. <laughs> like everyone everyone everyone's just like putting on this front yeah. to like make them seem like they know what's going on yeah. and like that they've got their crap together but no one really does i don't think that's messed up in a way the whole it's world it's so messed up the whole world is insecure about literally themselves. everyone is so insecure i'm like oh my goodness when did you notice that um I think I noticed it when like, I just like notice the way people act. Mm. And like, when someone is like rude or mean to you or judges you, I think it comes off like the basis of them being insecure in their self, in, them, in themselves. So they feel like they have to project that onto other people to make themselves feel better. Or for example, if like someone is like mean to me and constantly being rude to me, like I can, uh, I can be hurt by that. But then I can like do the same to someone else, based on that. I don't know. I feel like a lot of like what's projected on someone, they project out as well. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the spot that I live in, there's like middle class mm. and then like lower class. Mm. So I've been around both of those my whole life. And you come down here. A bit different okay. you've got you've got like your upper class as well down here tell me about it what was the experience like for you to you i don't know i always just felt like certain people look down mm. on people like me i don't know could be the way i dress the way i talk mm. I don't know. they just don't think of me as like the same as them oh really even from the school i wouldn't say from the school mm. because at the school, everybody just ended up coming to terms with that I don't live down here. Mm. I'm a bit different, but they all just sort of got used to it. Okay. What made you think that they kind of looked down on you? How did you experience that part? Uh, just the way they sort of, they'll give you like a look, like a dirty look when you're walking. Mm. Like if you see somebody walk past you, they'll give you like a side eye or something. Oh, wow. yeah. And you just sort of like you just get used to it after a while have you tried to i don't know change to be more like them no i wouldn't change to fit in somewhere i'm happy being myself if people want to look at me as like a dick mm. or something different mm. i'll just let them be that's their opinion mm. i'm not going to change myself to fit in with other people mm. Is it, was it more comfortable in the central coast compared to here or no it's the same 
uh, there's rich areas on the coast, mm. but you'll find a lot of the time that they won't look down on you mm. because they're just sort of like, because mm. there's normally rich and then like middle class in mm. one area mm. up there. So they're sort of used to like, what, like seeing like people like me. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas sometimes down here you go into areas and they're not used to seeing people like me walk around. I don't know. Really? Is it because of the certain style that you dressed up and the hairstyle? Um, what, what, what is it? I don't know. It could be the way I dress. Mm. My hair. I don't know. Mm. I love my hair though. Mm. <laughs> um, that, 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 what you just mentioned, all the people going partying, drugs, mm sleeping around with a lot of other people that mm. I, I that's the one of the few things that fills me with a visceral hatred oh. people throwing their lives away okay. i look at everyone and think everyone has the same potential that i am mm. but they decide to discard it and it i think that that leads to a lot of people's health issues mm. you know i just i just look at them and i feel empathetic for them like i feel sorry for them like you could be doing so much better mm. but it's not my position to try help you you know that's mm. it's not um everyone has free will and I can't say otherwise, really. Um, what are your ambitions? My ambitions? Mm. What would you have to do in life? If you talk about professional part, like a well, future you, job, a future you can, university. You can any, anything, anything. Anything you want to achieve. First, I want to will finish my studies including mm. university and become after that a sports commentator, sports journalist, mm. have my own studio maybe, mm. invest in something that uh, gives me money and helps other young people to find a job mm. and do a good thing after the university because here in Romania if you make the if you take the journalism classes mm. you're still not guaranteed that you'll become a journalist mm. and more and more young people that finish the uh, journalism uni uh, university mm. after that mm. uh, they are working in other domains and some people actually finish up in the street you know because they wow. don't find a place they don't have mm. enough money to sustain a mm. good life wow. but i want to be the exception you know mm. like if i pass all the tests mm. in general not mm. in school mm. in life mm. and i i'm re i still stay ambitious mm. about everything mm. and uh, get to my uh, how do i call them if i get them to my objectives mm. and i finish my studies and uh, find the job mm. then this is more than enough for me i just want to have enough money to uh, like live a good life and travel and mm. uh, even if I have to die tomorrow I, st I will still live my life at the best you know okay mm. right. have you thought about the death yeah. what is it like scary very scary mm -hmm. um, I don't know that's something I think I'll come to terms with yeah eventually yeah but um, I don't know. I think it'll just be something I come to terms with eventually. But at the moment, it scares me a bit. But I also don't really want to live till I'm like 70, 80, 90. So what's the age you're thinking of? 60s. <laughs> Why 60s? I don't know. I feel like once you get past a certain age, you just sort of become like, you're just sort of there. There's not much of you now. Like you're just old, I guess. You just you can't do much. I don't know. I just don't want to live that long. I just feel like life would start to get boring. Mm. Your body starts to deteriorate on you and everything just becomes, you just pretty much become, in my opinion, I don't mean to sound rude, but like sort of useless. Oh, wow. Like not useless. I've, I've worded that really wrong, but like mm. everything just becomes harder for you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like walking, living pretty much just becomes hard what about your children because you're gonna have a ch family your children is gonna be say i don't know 20 30 they still need a dad to be around they'll have my money 
Fair enough. You know, I have the impression that the because I only, only interview three people in Romania, but you guys are like a lot more mature than on average in Australian like same age students, like people. Yeah. <gasps> maybe like oh. you want I some? think maybe no. Okay. I think maybe we're even more mature than Romania because we have some classmates, especially boys. They mature later. Oh, they no, are no, no, no. They that they mature. mature later because <laughs> mothers cuddle them, and I seen that in my in my brother, and it hurts yeah. me so much. Uh, my mother would wash his hair, and she would he would be in twelfth grade. Like he would the go final to college. Grade. Wait, wait, wait! Can you can you repeat that? What, what? What? He would go to college in like two weeks, yeah. and she would still wash his hair because. <laughs> yes, she would cut his nails with, with the clippers. I don't believe. I cooked for <laughs> myself mm. at eight years old. Mm. For myself, my mm. brother hasn't cooked in his life. He, he I, I teach him how to make an egg, I think, mm. and he was in third year in college. One egg, and he was scared of oil because it was burning. That's ridiculous. Ooh. Yes, that's ridiculous. I, 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 I told her as well, and uh, she wouldn't listen to me. She said that uh, it's because he was really sick when he was young. Mm. But he is fine now, so why cuddle him so much? What's gonna happen to his girlfriend? <laughs> he has a girlfriend. <laughs> Maybe he's looking something, I don't know. Uh, he has a girlfriend, but she's more of the traditional type. So she cooks, she cooks. Yeah, it's, she... Really, it's really traditional in Romania for like a girl to be raised as a good like housewife, kind of. Yes. I so mean, I wasn't raised need... that way. I, I thank God. Yeah. Thank God I wasn't raised that way. Like my mom was like, no, you're going to be an independent man. Like, you don't need no man in your life. You know, like this kind of person. But a lot of like our classmates, I feel like also they are raised like, you have to cook, you have to clean, you have to know how to do like to please a man, whatever, whatever. Was like, ah. oh my gosh. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, where do I start? Um, I love reading. I love reading. I, I'm called a nerd by a lot of people, which I'll take. It's funny. Um, I love talking to people, learning about cultures, talking about philosophy. I love learning about philosophy, um, you know, uh, art literature like I like to take as much as I can from life all different aspects of life and live it I like thinking about the world in different perspectives and I like learning about different perspectives I also just like having fun and doing nothing um, I'm just like another teenage girl um, and yeah I, I like um, I like having good friends that I can connect with. It might be like a smaller group of people, but um, I like having good, solid relationships in my life. And I think uh, also um, I kind of like try to get to push negativity out of my life and I preach living with kindness. So I like to be kind to it. Yeah. I like to think that I have changed drastically in the few years that I've been out of high school. I was a very different person in mm. high school. I was still very, very immature. Mm. And I look back on that stage of my life with some, I guess, negative gaze, but I don't, I wouldn't change it because if I do change it, I wouldn't be who I am now. And I think I am fulfilled in the sense that my ability to conduct myself through day to day life is at a high standard. Okay. So, in that respect, I. I I do acknowledge the fact that I was, you know, very immature, but then again, I was 17. I was 16, you know, I was still very, very young. I was a year younger than everyone else as well. Oh, wow. So. 2003. Okay. What part you didn't like about yourself, immature, you think it was immature? Um, I, I was very, very outgoing, um, like very, very annoying, I guess, to other people. I, I look back now and I realize that I was annoying a lot of people with how really? I was talking. I was always talking. I was always making noises. I was just... Um, I, did, I wasn't in control of my, my, my body and my mind as much, you know, I was quite impulsive and things like that. Mm. That's that's from me looking at how I am now. Mm. Other people might have disagreed, mm. like my parents, they, they don't really notice it, but they don't have the ability to look back as I do now because, you know, I'm self-reflecting you know, as, as I am now. Have you seen a psychologist? Uh, I've been to five psychologists. 
Five. Five. Okay. Five in three years. So, is it helpful? No. How come? Because I'm not listening to anybody. I've okay. never listened to anybody in my so, life. So they're giving you exact advice? Just some advice. Okay. And what can I do with advice if I don't apply it in real life? Mm. Nothing. I have to adapt to the situation by myself. And mm. I'm my own psychologist. Yes, I talk with my friends. Yes, if I mm. feel some pain in me that mm. I have to free up. Mm. Yes, I say my uh, frustrations. Mm. But in general, the only person that can actually understand me mm. and give me advice is me mm -hmm. and God. Mm -hmm. And God is not a person. God is an energy mm -hmm. that is in everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. But those are like the two things or people or existences mm -hmm. that uh, can give me advice. Not a psychologist that doesn't even know 5% of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every day. Anyone sends me a message, there's a high chance I just don't like having. I feel like it's it's a chore to respond to my messages. I just don't like it. Mm. I like. I also. I don't really like FaceTime calls either. I just like hanging out in person. I just can't do like. I don't know. It's weird. Mm. But yeah, I feel bad because a lot of people think I hate them because I just like eventually just stop talking to them. But I just can't do messages. Because, I don't know. How are you going to survive in this modern digital world then? <laughs> she won't. She'll I won't. Live. She'll live. One I day I'll be all alone. No, sometimes I wonder, I'm like, did it, like, what happened to Izzy? I haven't heard from her all day. And yeah. then I find out that she was either asleep or just not See, bothered to See, it's really reply. hard because now I can't go to school every day and tell it. Like, I talk a lot. She does. It's but insane. In person. Oh yeah. Yeah. She talks a lot. I talk a lot. I mean, um, no, she's been talking. I have a lot of stuff time. to say. You know, <laughs> like a bunch of things will happen, and I have to tell everyone. So I sometimes I do just spam the group chats. But other than that, like I don't know how I'm going to survive not seeing people every day because that's the only way I. That's what I haven't liked about finishing school I is not seeing people. people. Yeah. Going days without seeing people. It's, it's bad, bad though. I should probably like you should learn to me. how to <laughs> message people. I just, I don't know, I can't do it. It's such a chore. Like, I feel, I don't know. I just, like, I look at my phone and there's, like, a bunch of messages. And I'm like, oh, I have to respond to all of them. So. <laughs> but, like, see, if you, if you don't respond to messages, and do you then meet up with your people in person often? Um. No, she's the worst at planning things. Yeah. I'm always trying to hang out with her and then she's like, I'm busy. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> but, yeah. Because I used to see them like every day at school and that was like, I have to go to school. So. What about now? I don't know, but like... I feel like I've seen, I've seen Izzy nearly every day this year so far. Yeah. So that's been great. So. But I don't know how I'm going to have to just learn how to... Yeah, um, I have to reply to everything or I'm going to forget about it. See, I have to read every message. If I'm in a group chat and there's a bunch of things oh, no, said, I, I will scroll to the top and I will read every message. Really? I don't. I but I just don't. Like, I'll leave it to, like, the end of the day. But I just don't. Like, see, I, I'll i leave, like, people on delivered for, like, months, Forever, and it's really months, annoying. And then I'll respond to them, like, okay. ages. How many friends do you have? <laughs> well, I... I'm sorry. <laughs> I have my like, you know, my five close besties yeah, yeah. and then I have, you know, I have a lot of family friends. Mm -hmm. I have friends that, you know, like don't really go to school. So I talk to them probably, I don't know, because I don't really have like group chats with some of them. So mm -hmm. I'll talk in the group chat with you guys, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I have quite a lot of friends. I just don't, you know message them a lot <laughs> okay. but um, yeah somehow I managed to stay friends with them so. <laughs> good job must be some something magical about you then <laughs> yeah it's cool. um you talking about the magic okay um how come you feel like you're you feel less than other people um I don't know just I suppose where I grew up it's not like the houses up there aren't as flashy like where I live as they are down here like some of the boys that I'm mates with live in ridiculous houses. Really? Yeah. Who's that? Oscar Mason. 
Oh shit! But Mason, you can't believe Mason. You know, Mason is Mason's house is better than everyone else yeah. in in the school. You can't compare yourself to the Mason and then you feel shit about yourself. That is not. That's not all. No, that's just how my brain thinks. That's just the way it thinks every now and then. But then I sort of look at Mason and then I realise he's almost the same as me. Like, he thinks the same as me. We do the same stuff. He's just got a bit more money than me. What does that make you feel? Doesn't bother me that much. I feel like I've had a good life with the amount of money that we've been dealt. I've had all the fun I can. What about the school eyes at school? What do you mean? Like the the fact that you're not doing, you know, pretty well, you know, school wise, like that's make you feel bad about yourself a little bit. No. Nah. Nah. I never really. After like a while, I just sort of realized I didn't care that much about school. Mm. It didn't interest me. I didn't put in any effort to it, pretty much. But how come you still? Go through so much trouble. Wake up early in the morning and come to school every every day, like for your whole high school life. I wanted to drop out in year ten mm -hmm. when I could have, mm. but um, dad said to me, I may as well finish now, mm. and I just couldn't be bothered to argue with him. Wanted to make him proud of me, so I finished high school. And, uh, that's something really messed up that happened to us. Uh, in class, our our teacher brought us this uh, signs that said okay. that abortion is in, wrong in the sixth grade in, in the, the sixth grade we which were like, were with like 12 13, 13 something like that and we didn't know what abortion was of course and they ju she just made us stand with the signs to take some pictures yeah and we didn't it was know propaganda. what it was saying like it was... on them exactly because there was some kind of walk for life or something like that in our city and we didn't know shit yeah and, she, and now yeah. we look we look back then and because it's on the we really think that that's messed up. We didn't know what we signed up for. We were just in classroom. <laughs> Anyone sends me a message, there's a high chance I won't respond. I just don't like having I feel like it's it's a chore to respond to my messages. I just don't like it. Yeah. I like I also I don't really like FaceTime calls either. I just like hanging out in person. I just can't do like I don't know weird but yeah i feel bad because a lot of people think i hate them because i just like eventually just stop talking to them but i just can't do messages because i don't know how do you gonna survive in this modern digital world then <laughs> she won't she'll i won't live. she'll live one day i'll be all alone no, sometimes i wonder i'm like did it, like what happened to izzy i haven't heard from her all day and yeah. then i find out that she was either asleep or just not see bothered it's to really reply. hard because now i can't go to school every day and tell it like i talk a lot she does it's but insane. in person oh yeah yeah she talks a lot i talk a lot um, you know, she's been talking i have a lot of stuff time. to say you know like a bunch of things will happen and i have to tell everyone so i sometimes i do just spam the group chats but other than that like i don't know how i'm gonna survive not seeing people every day because that's the only way i that's what i haven't liked about finishing school I is not to seeing people, people. yeah it's going days without seeing people it's, it's bad, bad though i should probably like you should talk learn to me. how to <laughs> message people i just i don't know i can't do it it's such a chore like i feel i don't know i just like i look at my phone and there's like a bunch of messages and i'm like oh I have to respond to all of them.